Good morning. We have seen in the last lecture some of the functional anatomical part of the spinal cord. In this particular lecture, we are going to see the functions of the spinal cord and the internal organization of the spinal cord. How the internal organization of the spinal cord is going to help in the functions of the spinal cord. As you can see on this particular slide, there are functions which are given in this particular slide. The first and the most important function is the spinal cord is always acting as a thoroughfare for all incoming and outgoing impulses from higher centers to the periphery and from periphery to the higher center. So it is acting like a toll naka. So every information coming from the in, uh, periphery has to cross this toll naka and from the higher center whatever motor information is has to pass through this toll naka. So this main function of the spinal cord is acting as a toll naka which is a true fare for this information. The second main important feature of this spinal cord is it is the main center for reflex activities. You have already studied the reflexes. Now these particular reflexes which are linked only for the spinal cord we are going to study in the next lecture that is stretch reflex, flexor reflex, quality tendon reflexes etc. Now coming to the third important function of the spinal cord. The spinal cord has uh, many interconnections and due to these many interconnections it is always provided loaded with information and thus it acts as an integrative function. So it always integrates the Function. So, these are the main important three functions of the spinal cord. Apart from this, you also, the spinal cord also has a special neuronal circuit for the purposeful movements to occur. Say for example, in day to day activities, we have not many uh, purposeful activities which are performed. Say for example, to improve movements of the legs, hand movements while walking, the neck movements while turning, the eye movements, the expressions on the face, all these will be dealt with the special neuronal circuit which are purposeful movements. Then the brain always gives the command signals to the spinal cord for a particular activity and there is a sequential direction to perform this particular activity. Say for example, you are walking on a straight line and you are seeing that at the end of the straight line you have to turn on left or right. And this turning movement is possible due to these brain command signals which are passing through the spinal cord. Then if your body is moving it and suddenly you are going to stop, you know this acceleration, it stops and being, uh, the body moves forwards but again it reaches the equilibrium or status is reached. This is possible due to the spinal cord. Now if uh, suppose you are walking in a straight line on a road and suddenly a puddle comes in front of you. So if you are walking, you have to change your movement from walking to jumping. And this particular action again is integrated at the level of spinal cord. So the spinal cord acts or continuously monitors all your body movements which are in the day-to-day -day activity and thus helps in controlling the tone and equilibrium. So these nine functions which are allotted to the spinal cord are the functions particularly of the spinal cord. With the help of other brain structures, it is going to help in these particular structure or functions. Coming to the internal part of the spinal cord, which is important for having all these functions. Now you have seen yesterday in the lecture the H-shaped gray matter. In this H-shaped gray matter, you have several millions of neurons which are special neurons which are present there and these particularly two name sensory relay neurons, anterior motor neurons and interneurons are there. One by one, we are going to see all this. This is the figure in the last lecture also I have shown you. So you have sensory neurons, you have interneurons and you have the motor neurons. Coming to the anterior motor neurons. As the name suggests, they are present in the anterior hump of the corporate matter. They are very thousands in numbers and they are larger in size. Generally, they directly innervate the stimulatory muscle fibers. So, directly they are going to invade or innervate the stimulatory muscle fibers. Depending on the size, they are divided into two types, alpha motor neurons and gamma motor neurons. The larger type of fibers are termed as alpha motor neurons or type A motor neurofibers. 
they are generally of 14 micrometers in diameter. They branch many a times and then they enter the larger skeletal muscle fibers. Stimulation of this single alpha num fiber will excite around 3 to several hundred of skeletal muscle fibers. And this group is termed as motorionics. Remember your lectures of normal subphysiology, you have, must have studied the motor unit. The motor unit is defined as a group of skeletal muscle fibers innervated by the single nerve fiber. This particular single nerve fiber is the large type A alpha nerve fiber. Now coming to the smaller fibers. These smaller fibers are type A gamma fibers. The average diameter is around 5 micrometers in size and they go to small special skeletal muscle fibers which are termed as intrapensal fibers. These fibers are present in the mus muscle spindle which is the sensory receptor which is present in the muscle. And the function of this muscle spindle is that it controls the basic muscle tone. What exactly is tone? Tone is a partial state of contraction. So every time at rest also your body has a partial state of contraction in every skeletal muscle. This is allotted by the muscle spindle which are innervated by the gamma fibers in the intrapensal fibers. Coming to the third type of neuron which is interneuron. They are present in all areas of the cortical matter. These cells are numerous in number. The number is about 30 times more than the DD motor neurons. They are very small, highly excitable and spontaneous in activity. They fire as rapidly as 1500 times per second. So very rapid response is given by these connections. As the name is suggesting, it is having interconnections with one another and many of them also synapse directly with the interior motor neuron. So they form a mesh and due to this, they integrate the information from every site of the stimulus. You have one another important feature of the spinal cord. These are the ring shots and inhibitory system. So what you have is these are again a specialized cells which are specifically inhibitory cells. They are in close association with the motor neurons. What they do? They transmit the inhibitory signal to the surrounding motor neurons to suppress the tendency for signal to spread laterally and thus sharpening the signal. So as you sharpen your pencil. It is like only the sharpened end which is the stimulated part and whatever peripheral part which we discarded due to the inhibition given by ring cell. You also have some fibers which are specialized fibers from running from one segment of the cord to the another and they are ascending and descending also. These are termed as propulsive spinal fibers and the function of these fibers is they provide the pathway for the multisegmental reflexes. So they connect the segments to each other and whatever reflexes which are multi-segmental in origin, they will be initiated via these proprio-spinal fibers. So these reflexes coordinate the simultaneous movements in the forelimbs and hind limbs. Coming to the muscle sensory receptors. Already you must have studied in the receptor lecture which is taken by Dr. Rahul sir that what different type of receptors are present. Now we have seen these neurons, sensory neurons, the motor neurons and the interneurons and they are uh, via the spinal cord they are giving the information and they are invading the skeletal muscles. Now in these skeletal muscles you have these receptors which are special receptors. In this particular session we are just revising what are these sensory receptors. There are two special types of sensory receptors. One is present in the belly of the muscle which is termed as muscle spindle. This is important for sending the information to the nervous system about the muscle change in the muscle length or rate of change of length. So whenever there is contraction or relaxation, it changes the muscle length and this is detected by the muscle spindles which are presented in the, present in the belly of the muscle. The second special type is Golgi tendon organ. As the name suggests, it is located in the muscle tendons. And whenever there is a change in the tension or rate of change in the tension of the muscle fiber, that will be detected by these Golgi tendon organs and then this information will be transmitted. If you see just the anatomy of these muscle spindles, these questions are asked in the examination. Many a times a short answer question is asked. So this information is very much important. So each 
spindle is around 3 to 10 mm long. It has two types of fibers, small intrafusal fibers and large extrafusal fibers. Small intrafusal fibers are very small skeletal muscle fibers and the central region is not having any actin or myosin filament whereas at the end some of the actin and myosin filament are present. Now all of you are familiar that if the actin and myosin is there the part will be able to contract but the central portion does not contract because it does not have the actin and myosin. So the center part of intrafusal muscle fiber is functioning basically as a sensory receptor. The end portion of which is capable of contraction is innervated by small gamma motor neuron fibers, whereas the extrafusal fibers is innervated by large alpha E front fibers. Coming to the figure, now we can see the small uh, red, dark red in color intrafusal fibers, the central part and the peripheral part and then you have the covering of extrafusal fibers. So you concentrate on the intrafusal fibers. In the middle part you have the sensory part. So you have type 1A fiber and type 2 fibers and basically this is primary ending only the sensory part. Whereas at the periphery it is motor also which is able to contract. It is innervated by gamma fibers which are smaller in number. And these are infusing or innervating the intrafusal fibers. If you are concentrating on the extrafusal fibers, you can see large alpha motor endings are innervating the extrafusal fibers. So, this is what is your muscle spindle. This muscle spindle receptor can be excited in two ways. First, it can lengthen the hole. Whenever there is a lengthening of whole muscle, it stretches the mid portion of the spindle and thus it excites the receptor. So, stretch whenever is occurring to the sensory part of the intrafusal fiber, that is the muscle spindle. You know that this is the sensory part. So, it has to change the stretch. Uh, it has to reach at that particular level, then only it will be exciting the receptor. So, if the whole muscle is lengthening, it will stretch the mid portion and excite the receptor. Sometimes if the stimulus strength is less, then the length of the entire muscle will not be changing. Only the end portion will be contracting. But still it stretches the mid portion, then the excitation of the receptor will occur. So remember, if you have to have the excitation of the receptor, the middle portion of the spindle, which is the sensory part, has to be excited. And to have the excitation, there should be have a specific strength of stimulus then only it will have the excitation. Coming to the innovation, two types of nerve endings are there. We have seen in the previous, like, uh, previous slide, the primary ending and the secondary ending. The primary ending generally is type 1A in fiber, which is fast in conduction, 20 to 120, and it is encircling. Whereas the secondary ending is smaller, type 2 fibers, and it innovates both the sides of primary ending. The, many a times it encircles also but most of the time spreads like a branch on a bush. Again we will revisit the same figure. Concentrate on the primary ending and the secondary ending. Primary ending it is encircling whereas the secondary ending is like a sheath. So this is what is muscle spindle. Now this particular slide from this particular slide onwards I will be taking the particular slide. Uh, in the next lecture. So, up till now what we have covered is functions of spinal cord and the structure of internal structure of the spinal cord and the structure of the muscle spindle. So, you just revise these three topics. In the coming lecture, again, what different type of muscle spindle fibers are there and what are the reflexes that we are going to study. Hope, again, this, is, uh, this session is helpful and thank you all. Have a safe day.